so if we learned one thing about today, it's that the day before is real. Real fucking bad. So <laughs> I don't even know where to start with this, but I was able to play the day before for the first time and I regret every second of it. But I, I just have to start by saying that the launch of the day before kind of went exactly how I thought it was going to go. The fact that their Discord has been completely locked down, you can no longer join it. You can't type anything. If you are in there, they have locked down all of the channels. Overwhelmingly negative reviews on Steam with over 3,000 reviews at the time of recording it, and it is only going up. The fact that this was touted as a genre-defining, revolutionary survival MMO. When you hop into game for the first time, you're greeted by the tutorial, you're talking to all the people around Woodbury, and then when you go out into the world for the first time, you realize just how empty and barren this world is. Now, there's a lot of cars and a lot of things to loot, a few stores you can go into, but the lack of any sort of zombie threat is kind of crazy. There are no zombie hordes like we've seen in the original trailers. There is nothing of the sort. The most zombies that I've ever had to fight as a player in this game was three. One of them being an armored zombie inside of a bank and then two other stragglers that kind of just jumped into the fold. At one point, I was hiding behind these little like plastic like roadblock things. I was shot through it. Now, a lot of people in chat were chalking that up to, you know, bullet penetration. Well, it's plastic. They could just shoot you through it. I kind of had the idea that that wasn't the case considering these developers didn't even bother developing any sort of melee system for the game or any sort of vaulting system for the game. Meaning if you go down into this area like this, you can't even jump out of it. You got to loop all the way around and you can even see that the zombie pathing is a little bit glitched in this area as well. The game is so bare bones and nowhere close to a genre defining survival game that they were touting in their original interviews. The game plays nothing like the original trailers that were shown, like we all kind of assumed was going to happen, only it's crazy to see the meltdown in real time. And this was exactly what I was talking about. Your marketing and your communication was so bad, I would say in some cases downright lying. And now that people have their hands on it for the first time, they spend $39 on it, they get burned like I kind of knew they would. The meltdown has begun with the Discord being locked down, people getting banned and posts being deleted in the community hub, it's over. This was one of the biggest launches. At one point, I think we saw 32,000 people in game, meaning these developers just made off with multi-million dollars. At $40 a piece, these guys just made out like bandits. The only zombies that you kind of see in the world might be like one or two walking around on the streets. And then what they do to kind of get away from that load on the server is sometimes they'll spawn zombies like breaking out of a vehicle. Even though if you're looking at the vehicle from afar, there's nothing in it. And then when you get close, a zombie like breaks out and spawns out of it. So it's a spawn closet that kind of takes less load on the server because they don't have to worry about so many like NPCs walking around. But there's no, there's no zombie hordes. There's barely any players on the server. This is a running sim like I have never seen a running sim before. It is worse than DayZ. It is worse than Deadside. It is worse than Scum in every way imaginable. Now, it does have some redeeming qualities, but not enough to make it worth a $40 purchase. I like the idea of a central safe zone hub. I like the idea of buying things and then like interior decorating your cabin and building up your camp that's outside of Woodbury. I think that's a cool idea. I also like the environment design itself. Urban, dense, a lot of cars and stuff around to loot, a lot of things, and the game looks pretty decent. It doesn't look anywhere close to as good as the original trailers, but it's passable and something that I would love to get into but the player size on these servers are fucked and you can barely get in as is. I haven't even talked about the fact that every server in the game is either full or when they're not full, you hit connect on it and it just gives you an internet connection error, meaning you can't even play. The game for I would say about 80 to 90% of players is unplayable. It was one of the biggest shit shows in the survival community. I ran into some issues with like a zombie flying up in the air, people kind of sliding around on the ground. Those are things you're gonna see when you jump in game. But there's something that another streamer found that uh, maybe explains why I got shot through a wall when I thought I was behind cover. Check it out.
What the fuck? So now what comes next is Fantastic's response. What are they going to say now? Because a lot of people are feeling burned by spending $40 on an early access game that they either can't play or when they do get to play is kind of shit. And with your own statement on your Steam page that you're only going to be in early access for six to eight months, granted you do say things can change, I think a six to eight month development time for early access is a little bit too ambitious. You have a lot of things that you need to work out to make this game even worth a fuck to play. And on top of that, your guys' plan is to charge $49 when the game leaves early access. The game better be worth it. Right now, you don't even have Melee. You don't have a vaulting system. You don't even have voice over IP. What you've created is a PVP battleground because the zombies are irrelevant. You'll find like maybe five total as you're running around and then you just see players. You can't talk to them. You can't chat. You can't facilitate trade. And the whole idea of this thing makes no fucking sense to me. Everybody spawns in Woodbury because that's the central hub. And then you just go out and kill each other to bring resources back for people at Woodbury. It makes no fucking sense. If you were to develop multiple safe houses and factions, and then it would make sense for PvP to take place, but you guys didn't even think about that. You didn't even think about the fact that you could just run out and die, and when you spawn, you get $500. So now that just facilitates people running out, getting killed by zombies, and getting paid for it. I don't know if it's a bug, but people are going to exploit the fuck out of it, because when I found out about it on stream, that's the first thing I did. In order for you to make money in this game, you have to do missions. Or you could just run out and die, not risk anything, and get $500 for it. How does that make any sense? There's a lot of things they didn't even fucking think about. On top of the fact, I didn't even get to this. Everywhere you go in the city, there are alarms going off. There's car alarms, store alarms, and it feels like at some point you can't get rid of it. You can't find a spot where you don't have a consistent alarm bell ringing in your fucking ears. Dude, the alarms in this game are fucking ridiculous. Yeah, listen to all the car alarms. Like, that's insane. You can't get away from them. And the thing is, is where you think that would attract the zombies, there's none to be found. Yeah, all the alarms in the world and not a single zombie chasing them. They only spawn in vehicles. Jesus fucking Christ. Where is everybody? This feels half-cocked. This feels half-baked. Just like we kind of thought it was going to be. I took so much shit over the years for feeling just a little bit of cynicism for this. And it's clear as fuck to me now that what we were shown in the initial days of the day before, you know, before all of the delays and the engine switches and all of this other drama that this game has just consistently been under, I think my skepticism was right because you guys haven't proven that you can create the game you initially told everybody you were creating. And it's unfortunate that you put a game out that is half cocked, half baked, and then you hide behind the early access tag as if it's some sort of shield from criticism. You guys were supposed to launch this game two years ago, and you didn't because of the delays and the consistent delays, the engine switch, the delay, the missed release dates. And then when it comes down to the final hour, you choose to throw it under this early access tag as if it's supposed to hide you from any sort of criticism of the title. That's not how this works. And if you're gonna charge $40 for a game that plays this bad and has these kind of bugs and these kind of issues and this kind of server instability, Unfortunately, I think you guys deserve everything that you have coming to you. Anyways, my name is Big Fry. Fuck the day before. Fuck fantastic. Leave a like on the video and subscribe for my honest feedback and concerns and thoughts on all of these kind of games. And for fantastic, maybe don't tell everybody you're making a genre-defining MMO survival game and then put out something that is so below par compared to everything else that's on the market, and maybe you won't be in the situation that you're in. But do they give a fuck? They just made probably five to six million dollars today. What can you say? My name is Big Fry, and I'll see you on the next one.